Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. In this video, we are going to do a review of a bench dog hand plane. It's actually a five and a half. So if you're curious, I am. Haven't opened this box yet. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. I get asked by lots of folks on plane recommendations, especially this last year or so where they've been so difficult to find. And uh, this bench dog is a brand that I'm not terribly familiar with. I reviewed a uh, router plane that they made. You can check that out. We'll put the link below. And I was actually quite surprised. Jake bought this. It was $220. Um, they haven't let me open it up. I haven't even taken the lid off. So I'm as curious as you are as to find out if it's any good, how much time does it take to prepare it, and when it is sharpened up, how does it work? So if you're looking for a decent hand plane, maybe this is going to be the one, maybe it isn't. We'll both find out together. Okay, so it's a rather sturdy box that it comes in. Obviously, it was shipped in a bigger box. On the end, it says bench dog number five and a half jack plane, made in India. And the manufacturing date is June, 20, June of 21, so this is very recent. Open this up. There's some specs. And this has been signed by someone. Uh, they're claiming, or their statement says that it's square to the sole to within a one and a half thou. Uh, the sole flatness is, the specification is between one and a half thou and two thou. The observation made by the inspector was it was within one and a half thou. Those are good tolerances if that's actually the case. Blade hardness, 60 is the specification. It actually came out at 58. And that's on the little bit on the low side. We typically would work 60, 62. And then it gives the length, width, height, not that critical information. There's a manual here that goes through, and it is in English. It shows different products that they make. A little bit of information on what to do. It actually has some information on honing the blade. I haven't gone through and read this, obviously, but I will take a look at it at some point. There is a... Uh, plain sack. So this is a silicone, impreg I, I presume, because all the others that are sold are. It's, it's uh, silicone impregnated and you keep your plane in and it prevents it from rusting. Now the, the box is actually pretty good in terms of the uh, foam that they have inside. So if you're going to ship something, that's a that's as good a box. That's actually probably the best shipping package that I have seen for hand planes. Most are in cardboard, a good jolt. They usually don't survive. Now, I can see that whatever oil they've used on this has created a stain on there, so I may have to wipe that off. And I mean, say wipe it off, I mean with some kind of a solvent. Fairly heavy plastic bag, although the blade is cut through, but that happens a lot. Okay, now I'm just gonna see. I don't think this, this, you know, it does wipe off. That's good. They've got their logo engraved on there. Um, it's, it's pretty good machining. I mean, that's, that's quite smooth. Made in India and the five and a half, that's actually, that's laser engraved. All right, let's take it apart and have a look at some of the individual pieces. Okay, now, before I do anything, actually, I'm going to just put this beside a Wood River five and a half and just see how it... Uh, Compares lengthwise, well, it'll be within an eighth of an inch of being the same length. The uh, Wood River comes in at two and thirteen sixteenths in width, 
and let me see, just check that again. Yeah, two and thirteen sixteenths, and this one comes in at two and a strong seven eighths. A little bit of a difference. Yeah, very close in weight. Okay, let's set this aside and have a look here. So, uh, first impressions. I'm curious as to why that toe screw is sticking up so high. There's not a there's not a lot of really nice shape on that rear tote. So if you were to, and I don't mean to compare, but if you were to look at this, and then compare it to that, this is this as I hold onto it is really. It needs to be tilted forward. When you put your hand on this one, it puts your hand in that position that it just feels right. When I grab this one, um, it, ne it definitely needs to be tipped forward. Not sure why they did that, but that's what it is. Uh, my first impression of the front knob, yeah, doesn't uh, doesn't do anything for me. But and. That's a little bit, so if I, if I was, if you were using this over any amount of time, you would, that's a sharp edge and it sticks up above and it is right on the palm of your hand. So that would end up creating a blister. So that's going to have to be addressed before you actually work with this. I need to find out why that screw is sitting like that. I don't worry about the handles coming, not being tight, just wood shrinks. Let's look at the overall casting. So if you look in here, it's, it's uh, I wouldn't call it clean, so you can see the casting is relatively rough on the inside. This doesn't affect performance. This is just overall first impression. And if you look out here, that's, that's really kind of chewed up looking. So I wouldn't call that a very neat casting. And I see the same thing around here. So first impression, yeah okay not overly comfortable and when i try to put my finger down along here it really makes me want to have that handle lean forward that's that that is going to be a that's going to be awkward planing so you may have to go in and modify that but that's just my first impression right out of the box okay let's dig a little deeper so we'll take the lever cap off It's, uh, it's heavy, so it's a, obviously a solid piece of bronze. I prefer a lever cap as opposed to this uh, type that tightens down with a screw, but it is a nice sharp knurl, so you can get lots of torque on it. Underside, yeah, it's okay. Not that it needs to be, but usually um, the better the plane, the better all the parts are finished. And that's adequate. Now we're going to take this apart. May as well take that right off. I wish they'd find a better oil to pack in. So the blade comes in at uh, about a hundred and five thou, which is going to be on the thin side. If you look at a, a typical blade in a Wood River plane, it's coming in at a hundred and twenty-one thou. So a little on the thin side, thicker than standard uh, bench plane blades made by Stanley or Record. Now the chip breaker. That's a really heavy oil. I understand they don't want it to rust, but. Now this is the first time that I've ever seen the slot back here, which engages the yoke to be cut like that. It's beveled on both sides. That'd be interesting to see how that works. Uh, overall impression of the of the blade and chip breaker is that the machining is just a little bit rough, 
But when we actually go, well, there's something else too. You can see how blunt that edge is. That really needs to come to a point. So there's going to be a fair bit of work involved in going in and correcting that. If you left it like it is, your shaving comes up and it hits a flat uh, a square wall as opposed to having a nice sharp point that allows it to slide up and over. So that'll require a bit of work. Now remember, this was $220, so that puts it that puts it uh, above your standard bench plane you're finding in a hardware store, but on the low side of your premium brands. Now I'm looking at the lateral adjustment lever, and this is always a pet peeve. It's one piece of steel that's just bent. This is a little more robust than some, but still, it's it's not. Uh, it doesn't scream quality at all. It kind of even I would even put it on the low side of the of the cheaper versions of a lateral adjustment lever. Let's just take this off and have a closer. So the primary function of being able to adjust your frog is so that you can open and close the throat. And by having to do it this way, it makes it a lot more difficult than the bedrock style, which enable you to do this without removing the blade and chip breaker. I'm just gonna take this off completely. It's a pretty coarse thread. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. That piece of brass. I'm not sure why they did that, but they did. Let's just clean these contact points off. Now they looked, they look uh, better machined than what you typically would find in your hardware style for a hardwood variety, which often these aren't even painted. However, when I, when I run my finger across there, I can feel the ridges where the milling machine passed on both sides. So that's gonna take away from the accuracy right here and right there and there. Now on the bottom side, That's clean. I'm just going to put this in. Actually, I'm going to take this out first and just see if I can detect any kind of wiggle. Mm. You hear that? That doesn't seem to be sitting on there nice and flat. That's, that's a takeaway. All right, let's look at the frog. So as I mentioned, I don't like the lateral adjustment lever. And you just, you just look at the way it's been done. It's, it's a little on the rough side. In fact, it's a lot on the rough side. So there's your adjuster knob. And that's, I would call that uh, on the crude side, although it does have fairly heavy knurling, but sometimes you pick up a piece like that and it just feels like it has really good quality in it. And then other times you could pick up something like this and think, eh, could have been better. The yoke, well, if you look at how much slop there is on the yoke on that pin, and it's a pretty flimsy feeling yoke. And there's a lot of pressure applied to that when you're having to adjust your blade under the tension of the lever cap you want that to be a little more stout. I, I wouldn't give that good grade. The face of the frog, it, I don't see any, uh, I don't think anything that would tell me that it's not flat. In fact, it's actually machined fairly well. There's a few little places like here where somebody bumped it with the milling machine that they were going in to cut this out, but it's not the end of the world. Little on the light side. OK, 
Okay, let's look at this. That's rather crude. In fact, if you look at the bottom, I don't even think that's flat. The holes board off center, not a big deal, but look how rough that cast is. You've got a hunk of something sitting right there, and that's not a very, that, that doesn't even come close to sitting flat. So that would be, that's, oh, that's what, the, that's what that ding is from sitting on that little hunk of metal. Yeah, it's going to lose some points on that one. Now let's open, take this one off. No, I got to get a, got to make sure that your screwdriver sits right down in that brass slot, or other words, you uh, risk wrecking the screw. Okay. Not sure that's going to come out. Uh, I like to see these milled so that when that uh, rear tote sits on there, it sits nice and flat and makes good contact and you really get really good feel or feedback through your hand. Now, I've gone in and just taken a file to that and flattened it out, but obviously it's not done for you. As far as the woodwork part of it, well, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's mass produced, obviously, but the fact that it has no shape to it and I'd like to have it tilted forward no, I'm not, that wouldn't have been my choice for a screw to hold that down, to have that sticking up like that. That's, that's really crude. I mean, even the cheapest ones have that countersunk and the screw sits down in, but it'd be sticking right up like that. I, I wouldn't call any of these pieces finely milled. You look at the old Stanley and you'd see it, they'd be quite a bit better than that. Now the actual casting itself, we already looked at part of it. And uh, the, the sides are pretty uniform. Definitely, uh, definitely rougher than you would expect or, or would like to see on the inside. The outside's been decently ground. The corners are eased, so you don't have to go in there with a the file and fix that. The fact that there's uh, mill marks, actually ridges in here, that's, that's not good. This is really bad. And this, I wouldn't give them any points for that either. So the, and this uh, mechanism for advancing and retracting the frog. I'm not sure why it was done this way. Typically they just would uh, drill and tap that piece of metal instead of removing that and maybe they found this to be easier. But Okay, so I just want to point out again what we're going to do with the chip breaker. You can see how blunt you can actually see the edge. We need to bring that to a point. So what I'm going to do is simply grind that. I've got the tool rest set so that the bevel is matching the bevel that's on here and I'll go through and I'll grind that till it comes to a point. Okay, that took a long time. The uh, chip breaker had to be reground brought to a point. It was flat on the underside, which was good, but the blade took probably 45 minutes, and that was just to do a little back bevel, like I show in the uh, video on 32 seconds to sharp. So, uh, not good. Now, 
having done all that work, let's find out if it'll actually hold an edge and see how it performs. Okay. Now retract that. I'm going to start off with a piece of softwood and then I'll finish with a piece of hardwood to see how it, how it goes. So that feels fine. I uh, wouldn't have any suspicion that the sole of the plane wasn't flat based on performance. fair bit of backlash on there, but that's not the end of the world. It doesn't have quite the same feel that I would get from a Lee Nelson or a Wood River. There's something that's um, I can't really describe this other than the fact that when you plane, you want it to feel solid as a rock, meaning every you can feel the blade going through the wood, and the way that translates into your hand, if there's any vibration at all, it just, there's something missing. I, I get that feeling using that bench dog. I don't get that feeling using this wood river. And that could be from the fact that the frog does not sit nice and flat on those contact points. It could be from the blade being somewhat thin. Um, final thoughts. If you want a plane that will cut the wood and you're not terribly concerned with the cosmetics or even some of the uh, adjustment functions, then you could get one of these. But I think for $220, more should be expected. There was, uh, you need to know what you're doing in order to go through and fix the problems that we encountered. Um, lateral adjustment lever is really chintzy, lousy. Very poor fit of the front knob to the, to the plane, and that boss in there is really bad. No machining at all, and a rough cast. Overall, the casting is rather rough on the inside. That doesn't really matter, but it tends to show uh, how much care and attention went into the rest of it. I don't like the fact that the, the rear handle hangs over that boss by probably 3 16 of an inch, and that screw sticking up like that, that's not a very good sign of what I would call craftsmanship. I, I would really prefer that the handle was leaning forward a little more. It would feel a whole lot better in your hand. Um, other than that, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say it's a terrible plane, but I think my final comment would be for the money, I would expect a, a, a better plane overall. Hope that helps. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.